G'day there YouTube, welcome back to the channel everyone and congratulations to all of you, especially you. You've all done it, you've found the champ dog. So we're going to be jumping into the arena today but first, do you know what we have to do? Oh, there's normally a mug of coffee down there. I guess we're not doing the sip today guys. But the good news is you're going to enjoy it even more next time because did you know a behavior is actually more likely to become addictive if the reward for that behavior is slightly inconsistent. So if you are doing something, say, tuning into your favorite YouTube channel, expecting to share a cup of joe with old mate Champ Dog, if you are looking forward to and anticipating that little thrill as that, as that delicious, delicious brew hits your tongue and that caffeine gets into your bloodstream, and I snatch that away from you for no good reason, and you don't know whether you can reliably get that reward or not, you're more likely to become addicted to that behavior. So there you go, I'm gaming your psychology to get you all to come back here to the channel and watch more videos. Obviously that's not true, I just don't feel like a drink right now. Anyway, you came here to watch some arena. We're gonna play some arena, we're playing Is It Dragons today because I wanted to see how Maniform Hellkite performs in the Izzard Dragons deck. It looks like it was tailor-made for that deck. It looks like it's gonna be amazing. I wanted to find out just how good it would feel to get a 7-7 flying hasty attacker when I cast an Aaron's Epiphany. Spoiler alert, feels great. A Little bit different today. Rather than being on ladder, this is gonna be a traditional standard event. I'm running a little bit low on gold. I'm running very low on gems, so I wanna build up some gold Hopefully use that to draft, get some gems. You know how the uh, economy on Arena works. I'm sure you do. Anyway, I've got the first two games of my standard event against Mono White Aggro and against Demir Zombies. Should be fun. What you're going to see today is me make mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake and still pull a win out of my hat. And in the next game, you're going to see an opponent stuck on two lands and miss out on beating me by like this much. I mean, they get me down to about three health. There are, there's some weird and wild games you're about to witness. I'm so glad you could be here to view them. Anyway, guys, we're gonna jump into the arena. Why don't you shuffle up and I'll see you in the arena. Uh, so basically I'm just hoping to farm some gold um, so that then uh, when the season resets, or perhaps even before then I can turn that gold into drafts turn those drafts into gems and just start rebuilding my resources that have been running a little bit low lately. That's dope. That's such a dope avatar. He looks cool. Um, not having black mana sucks. Ah, uh, sorry, red mana is obviously what I meant. I was thinking of keeping it anyway, but actually this hand's just like way too slow. I'm still in a Hullbreaker horror mindset. Like if that had had a red and a expressive iteration, it could have been good. Um, this is actually quite tough. I guess I'm putting back memory deluge, which I don't love. To submit this just in case we want a fading hope something. Unlikely, but just in case. We are up against white weenies. Fantastic. Mono whites, I imagine. Don't need to uh, use the fading hope on that. Oh, we're flooding hard. We can uh, dragons fire it. So I'm actually going to... Yeah, no, I am going to stick with the plan. I'm going to kill the Aspirant. And bounce the three drop, because that slows them down a lot more. And I'm going to play my Hellkite. And, uh... Hope they don't have the Cathar. Just, you know, really hope. 
that they spend their turn uh, casting Welcoming Vampire again. Wonder what they take here. Oof, nearly made a mistake there. Nearly made a mistake. Obviously better to play the uh, egg first and get the counter on it. Need to find some card draw soon. I'm running very low on resources. I can't even cast this uh, Shatter Skull Smashing because it costs four. Can't even cast it for one at the moment. Oh, we have got our opponent down to 15. It's something. And they do seem to be running a suboptimal build of mono white that's a little too greedy on three drops. Which is very good for us because we've drawn atrociously. This is obviously going to help them race quite a bit. Flying blockers have arrived. Okay, I really have no idea what this deck is now. Yes, that was a very handy top deck, very handy. We were running out of steam there quickly. I probably don't want the Fading Hope so much. We're going to be on the draw, so probably cut a land. So yeah, bring in extra removal in the card draw. And uh, hopefully this, hopefully this uh, serves us well. Don't understand this name, 710 Tesseract. Maybe it's a reference to something. Are you a reference to something, opponent? Are you? What are you referencing? What are you about? What's your story? What's going on up there in that little head of yours? Reminder, stay hydrated, everyone. I'm sure if you guys can hear her. I've uh, pushed my chair out of the way. So that I can uh, stand. And my kitten has uh, decided that on the chair just to the side of me here is the perfect spot for her to uh, plonk and have a nap. Opponent is taking their time. Taking their time. All right, they're back. They are back. This hand is so one-dimensional. I mean, I love all of these cards, but I don't think I can afford to keep this, particularly on the draw. Only one piece of interaction. Alternatively, we could have no lands. You know what? I'm a mad lad. I'm going to give it a whirl. Um, I tried to grab this. It's actually way, um, it's actually somewhat more likely this will be relevant than this. I don't want to go down to five. It's very unlikely I win with this hand, but if I draw a couple of lands, I could be in the game. 
I felt like my likelihood of hitting land was higher than my likelihood of... Winning from five cards in hand. Syndicalism way worse with the Paladin class on the battlefield, but we're very happy that they're giving us time to catch back up. And library, exile. And we can divide by zero the Paladin class if we would like. Don't understand the art on this. But more likely we're going to end up bouncing this. We're just going to do it now. Okay, teachings is unlikely to be relevant. We're a few lands off mascot. And on that turn, we'd rather be casting Epiphany anyway, so I think we just take Sciences. No, I should have taken Mascot, because next turn I want a Gold Span Dragon, and then the turn after that, Epiphany, and then the turn after that, Environmental Sciences, is not going to be super relevant anyway. So they just spend their turn doing that. That's uh, great for us. We can't cast Gold Span Dragon anyway. because we don't have enough red mana, and that's really unfortunate because that was the perfect turn for us to do so. I don't want to foretell this because I want to hold up Divide, but I can't cast it because I uh, forgot about Paladin Glass. If they just recast Intrepid Adversary, we can Syndicalism in response, though. So hopefully that's what's up. No, we can't. We can't do that. Can't do that at all. So this... So I can cast the gold span dragon, attack, and then syndiclasm. Or I can smoldering egg and then syndiclasm. Wow, I'm playing so badly. I can't do any of these things. Can't do any of these things because I'm just, well, I'm not paying enough attention to small details and I'm not familiar enough with this deck anymore. But my opponent is playing way too conservatively, which is giving us every opportunity to, like, I'm not getting punished for my mistakes. And there's been a lot of them. Like, I shouldn't be in this game after playing so badly. But our opponent is just playing incredibly conservatively and giving us every opportunity to get back in the game. I really should have just attacked with the one. It would have been no different. Okay, so I can gold span, attack, and kick a syndiclasm. Doesn't really do all that much. Kills off the aspirant and one usher. Honestly, that's enough. enough. I don't really need it to do much more than that. Next turn I can Dragon's Fire, which will, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll run to Epiphany, of course, but I can, uh, Dragon's Fire plus an Ashmouth Trigger to kill off the Usher, but I need it to flip first. 
But uh, yeah, our opponent needs to seriously disrupt us this turn or they likely just die. Yeah. With what's in our hand and what's on board, they are uh, dead if they can't disrupt us. Oh, I wonder what this card is that they're hanging on to for dear life. Loyal Warhound. Cool. Yep, double strike. Yep, face is right here. Don't even need to cast anything. All right, game one is a win. A fairly easy one. That's a terrible build of mono white. On the draw, which I don't love. Um, how do I feel about this hand? I'm gonna keep it, but it's honestly pretty terrible. Hey, they got the orange version. Okay, Demir Zombies. Can't say I love that. Classic blue turn two play for Tell. Yeah, I mean, there's a good chance we just die here, right? Hopefully they don't have a counter spell. They do not. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that was actually the wrong grab, now that I think about it. Fortunately, my opponent is a bit choked on mana. Really the only thing keeping us alive. It looks like they do have some kind of interaction. Probably removal. Unfortunately can't afford to attack. An opponent stuck on two lands, and we're still about to die.
And I was thinking of casting Memory Deluge, but I can't. I need to, uh, two for one myself on this Tainted Adversary. Nice, no. It's not nice at all. If they have a Jwari Disruption, we're just dead here. I mean, this is a pretty, uh, pretty clear telegraph that we have some removal. So we cast this now so they don't get the token. I can't believe we're still in this game. We have no business still being in this game. Have I played a land this turn? No. So I can afford to play this iteration. And library exile. All right, the comeback begins. The fight back begins, courtesy of our opponent being mana screwed. Get to flip the egg now as well. And our opponent dies. Hooray, we got there. Did not look like... Honestly, it looks like we were going to lose to a guy on two lambs. Which is just wild. I mean, what do I bring in here? None of my sideboard cards are particularly good. Like, Malevolent Hermit is one of my best options. Wildly. Burning Hands doesn't hit enough things in their deck to be relevant. Yeah. I, um, I sadly think this is it. This is all I got. Wow. Wowzers. We got nothing for this match. Honestly, if they bring in, like, discard and uh, counter spells, I don't know how we win. But oh, we'll try to find a way. See what Jay's up to. I'm so tempted to actually keep this, and I'm going to, because I just want to see how Maniform Hellkite holds up. Shuffle is fine. Hold up this Dragon's Fire in case they have a Blade Stitched Scab. I'll take my two. Maybe they fell Stinger here. No.
They could have that counter spell, flip the switch, is it? Or any other counter spell. Twiri disruption at this point will do it. Sure. That's uh, all the removal in my deck gone. Wonderful. So, can I beat a 2 3 without any dragon's fires? Okay, so it looks like they're trying to hold up that um, four mana three three flyer. No, okay. They just got a terrible hand. I mean, I have a terrible hand, but like, they had nothing to do for their entire turn four. No counter. No removal, no creature. Loth, sure. My children drench their subservience will be rewarded. So we can kill Loth here. I didn't even notice that was a 4-4 in my head. I thought it was going to be a 1-1 because of the X equals 1 situation. Okay. If that's how you want to spend your entire turn, I'm reasonably happy with that. So we're hoping they don't have more removal. They do. It's a little bit sad because we could have more or less killed him on the spot. Four plus six, ten. They would have been on six. Memory deluge. Yeah. Ooh, savage. Absolutely savage. This is also pretty savage. I'd love to keep this divide by zero, but I can't. I can't cast it. I mean, I could just keep it in my hand, I guess, but. Fortunately, this epiphany is safe in the exile zone. Now, what do they kill? Interesting. I think there was a strong case for sacrificing it to itself there. Get through for 10 here. Third egg. Man, if we had drawn any instant or sorcery, this game would be over. I mean, I think it's still going to be very difficult for my opponent from here. 
And this deck just comes back when it has no business coming back. Yep. So opponent is dead. Any which way you look at it, good game. That's nice of him. All right, win number two. So are we at even money now? I think we are. I think it's just two wins to break even in this uh, this event. Is it not? I think it is. Pretty sure it is. All of that helps as well. Ooh, I've got a new mastery orb. Yeah, even money. Let's go spend our orb. Alrighty, those are our games for today, guys. As always, thanks for tuning in. I will be back very soon with some more games for you guys. I've got, I think, another four games in this event before we uh, tap out, which I will be sharing with you, and then we will be back onto ladder for a bit. I don't have a uh, hard and fast plan, but I'm going to be doing a little bit of ladder. I'm going to be doing some drafts. I'm going to be doing some more standard events. Which of those make it to the channel and which don't? is a mystery that you'll just have to tune in to find out. As always, stay brilliant. I'm going to catch you real soon.